Welcome to the episode of Locked In. In this episode, we're going to be discussing part four of my Monster Gravel Carbon Budget Mullet Bike Build series. I know, I gotta find something that's definitely shorter than that. But anyways, in this episode, we're going to be discussing the drivetrain components that I'm going to be using for this to achieve my SRAM Access Mullet Build level of gear range, but at a more affordable price point. So if that's something you're looking for, please stay tuned. So now we're going to be breaking down basically each individual drivetrain component and why I'm running it. The slight configurations that you can definitely go with at home to find possibly a different option that might save you some money, as well as why I went with each component. Now, as we all know, Access Eagle is extremely expensive and any mechanical group set, the most expensive component typically is gonna be your shifters and you have to make the decision, do you wanna go mechanical or hydraulic? Now I have ridden both. On my Poseidon X, I ran a mechanical setup with a Huin R1 hydromechanical setup, but for this build series and just from riding a hydraulic bike and a non-hydraulic bike, I wanna stick with hydraulic. So I'm gonna be using SRAM Apex one by hydraulic shifters and flat mount brakes. Now these are the actual shifters that came off of my TCX. They do have some battle wounds on them and I might want to do a future video on how to restore these and basically just clean them up after years of abuse. If that's something you guys wanna see, comment below. Obviously for your setup at home, if you don't care if you wanna go hydraulic, you can definitely save a considerable amount of money going non-hydraulic. Obviously this has more stopping power but there is added complexity, obviously, with bleeding the brakes and setting it up. I have to take it to a bike shop to do that since I don't know how or have the parts to. But that is one easy place to possibly save some money as well, depending on the setup that you want to run. Next, we're going into the rear derailleur. And again, I'm reusing parts, but upgrading them. So this is my one by Apex rear derailleur. I have modified it with the, I'm going to totally butcher it, Garbarook. Uh, rear cage, you've probably seen this on Pathless Pedals video and I wanted to go with the same setup on mine. One, because it does look cool and he proved that it does do the full capacity. Now, there is another option that I, I was running actually on the TCX with a decent level of success, was just running the stock Apex rear derailleur with a road link and that was it. Even though they don't recommend it or they say it's not compatible to go up to a 50 cassette ring, I actually had it run perfectly fine, but I ended up switching to this and I'm gonna be doing a video later for you guys on comparing this setup compared to a road link. A road link is about 25 bucks and this cage setup with the jockey wheels is about 150. So obviously a lot more expensive, but this did actually save weight on the rear derailleur, as you can see here, even though it's substantially bigger because this is a nice, really, really nice piece of CNC material. And it should, in theory, also make the shifting better because this should be stiffer than the stock steel cage. So make sure to turn notifications on so you guys can see that video when I put, put it out to give you basically two budget options. Next, on to my crank set setup. So if you look at any group set at pretty much any price point, the two biggest areas you can really save a substantial amount of weight for not a ton of money is gonna be your crank set and your rear cassette. So let's bust into the crank set first. As you can see here, this is my Force One carbon crank set. They do use a direct drive system, which I really love because it makes it really easy to swap out chain rings on this. This I run in a 172.5 length, and I currently have a range of chain rings that's gonna basically be from a 32 all the way up to a 38. And I know all the way up to a 38 doesn't seem like much. I will be experimenting with possibly trying to set this up for road as well and going with a 40 or 42 tooth chain ring. And even though all these seem really, really small, you have to wait till I tell you about my cassette so you can understand how I can get away with this and still have a decent top speed on my bike. This crank set is substantially lighter than a stock Apex crank set. And you can usually pick these up for around 150 bucks depending on condition, if it has rings or not. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to save a big amount of weight for not a whole lot of dollars. You could save, depending on what generation of crank set you're looking at for Apex, it could easily be two to 350 or more grams with a direct mount system like this and a carbon crank set compared to a stock setup from them. So that's really where I, I really su always suggest to invest money and in theory, this should be stiffer as well and has less rotational weight, all good things when upgrading your bike. And if you notice, I did have a different non-drive side crank arm. This is a Stages Gen 2 power meter. Uh, I had this on my other road bike and then I swapped out that crank set for the Sig Eye power meter that is direct mount based, which I could run on this system, but most of the chain rings I have right now are direct mount. So I figured why not reuse the Stages and have a power meter on my gravel bike with basically the lightest option you can get out there. This thing is definitely not the most accurate and I prefer my other power meter, but for now I'm running this guy and it only adds about 40 grams, I believe, over the stock crank set. Now we're getting into my cassette. This is the real big piece to my 
build that I think really separates it from anything else that I've seen. As you guys have hopefully seen on my channel, I did a lightweight cassette review on three wide range lightweight cassettes from the company called Zito. I reached out to them when they came out with a brand new cassette. In my research so far, and you probably correct me if I'm wrong, this is the widest range 11 speed cassette. It is a nine to a 50. Numbers wise, this is the widest range you can physically get right now for an 11 speed drivetrain that I am aware of. I've done a lot of research. There's plenty of 12 speed options in the 950 from E13 and other companies, and Zito makes one as well. But in an 11 speed option, I haven't seen this before. Now it is an XD hub drive body style cassette, so you will need that style of hub. But keep in mind that the stock Eagle cassette one is a lot more expensive. It is similar weight to this, but the big thing for me is that nine tooth really changes a lot on what you can run for your front ring. Typically, most cassettes go down to an 11 if it's a standard free hub body. Going to a nine is basically like adding six teeth to your chain ring in the front for comparison's sake. So an easy way that I tell people this is typically most gravel bikes will come with a 40 tooth chain ring with an 11 to something in the rear. So that 40 11 gear range is obviously your fastest gear set your basically top speed on the bike. Having a 934 is the same exact gear range essentially for gear inches. So your top speed would be identical between having a 40 11 and a 34 9. What that means is obviously your top end doesn't change but on the back end, when you're climbing, now you have a 3450 gear instead of a 4050 gear or whatever gear range you're running. So that's really where this setup shines. I've been really liking this cassette and I'll be doing an independent review for that on this channel as well. I put a handful of miles on it to make sure it was strong enough to hold up to it. And I've been really liking it so far. Look out for that video in the future. So that's gonna be it for the drivetrain. Obviously the chain is gonna be involved and depending on what you guys voted on the last video for my decal color on my Cobalt Warhawk that I'm using for this bike build, I'll be getting a chain that matches that color as well. And if you guys are interested in getting a carbon monster cross frame set from them, I have a link with a coupon code with 25% off the frame set in the description below. So in the next video, I'm gonna be discussing the wheels and the tire setup I'm gonna be running on this new build. And I'm super excited to finish this thing up and get on the trails again. So thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can see my weekly cycling content that I produce for this channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in today.